Welcome to Sacred Sessions, light-filled, uplifting and informative conversations for people on their spiritual path. Join me, Melissa Matthews. And me, Alison Filler here, each week as we openly share our personal experiences and wisdom on life, love and spirituality in the modern world. Hi everyone, how are you today? Welcome to another episode of Sacred Sessions. I'm Alison and I'm here with my beautiful co-host, Melissa. Hi Mel, how are you? I'm good and hello everyone. Thanks for joining us for another week. We've got a lot of wise things Alison's bringing up today. It's very, very interesting. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. I'm <laughs> so excited. This is such a, a, a topic that I've been, you know, wanting to talk about for ages and, you know, all my guides are like so excited that we're, you know, we've talked about a little bit of this stuff before, but it's going to be a whole episode on <clears throat> vows, contracts, unconscious commitments, and in this life and past lives. So there's so much exciting stuff to talk about, and I really hope we give you some um, information for you to really think about today about what might be sabotaging you in your life or you know, if you're working really, really hard to achieve something in your life and it's like you're just hitting a wall all the time, you just can't get above a certain level, it's <clears throat> this is the topic that might be perfect for you of why you are unconsciously sabotaging yourself because of old vows, contracts, commitments that you may have made this lifetime or past lifetime. So, Mel, and has I, uh, this ever related to you? Oh, uh, of course it has. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> always coming back to me. <laughs> it's funny, you know, because when Alison and I were speaking just before we started filming, you know, we were talking about this concept and I said, well, um, in the last few weeks, you know, I've been particularly working I, on a few things and I felt that in a particular area that, you know, I thought, oh, I just can't seem to push through, like, what's going on? And... So, you know, I, I did a meditation and, and, um, and I was very, very relaxed and, and I, and I heard something that was said to me when I was about six years of age and I thought, oh, wow. And it was like, that was it. It was just that. Now I've had other meditations, you know, where I've, um, you know, waited for particular information to come up, you know, about that thing. Why can't I just move forward? And the, those other meditations have related to past and other lives, parallel lives and multidimensional, you know, living, as I call it. But it was very specific. It was just that sentence. And it was just a six, you know, when I was six years of age and someone said something to me, not unkind or kind or anything like that, but it was just like, oh, my goodness, that. So can you share a little in. bit? So what that, oh, you know, gosh. even a statement like what that made, what that happened to you? Was it an un unconscious vow commitment or promise that you made to yourself from yeah. just hearing that? No, so, so it was something like, so this is back in the 1970s and, you know, we're still like hanging over then from the post-war era and things like that as well. So, you know, it's still, um, even here in Australia, you know, we're seen as quite a forward-thinking nation, but we... You know, we're still back in the 70s, you know, we're still guided by the man in the family and the women had particular roles. Even though we'd gone through, you know, the age of feminism and, you know, the age of Aquarius and being, you know, all that we can be, you know, as a child, you know, so six years of age, that would have been 1977. And the teacher, she was a beautiful teacher and she was um, a teacher until it became time for her to um, have children. So she was married, but that was that was why she was teaching excellent teacher but she just said well that's that's this is what we do as women meaning we go on to marry and we we just expect that this is how we are going to live our lives so it was in essence the the what came out of that comment like and that I deduced from that meditation after realizing that was that well actually are you really meant to go on and do that because this is this is what our life is set out to be rather than actually Melissa you are the orchestra you're the conductor of your own orchestra of your own life you are the one who decides how you do things and what you do you are without limit you are open to choice 
You have the right to choose. You have the right not to choose and you have the responsibility to choose or not choose. So that's what, that's how it came out in my meditation. And as you can see, like it was not um, something that she meant to limit. It was not something to put me down or whatever. It was just how that was in that time. So how's and that how sitting? we internalize it and yeah. and make up the story around yeah. that that yeah. can then infiltrate and influence us so much mm. um, yeah. in our life. So not meant to be harmful, but certainly it did draw really my attention. Really subtle one, yeah. Yeah, but it drew my attention also to what was going on around me at the time. So it might just have been that comment, but it, it's also like how it was in the world or in my world at that time it was about the roles of male and female and um you know and you could only go so far if you were married and as you know i've got well he's he's very nice to me <laughs> we have very good marriage he's very encouraging in fact sometimes he's a bit too why aren't you doing this as you know <laughs> he's like a bit too like come on you know you can do this stuff like why aren't you know what, what's holding you back so there's yeah. different yeah so He's coming at it from a different point of view. Like, come on, you can do this. Like, what's what's holding you back? You know, he's so that's the thing. Going really yeah. deep. What yeah. is holding me back? Yeah, and it can be something as subtle as yeah. a fear, just a fear of um, being judged, a fear of being criticised, a fear of um, people not supporting you, a fear of looking stupid, a fear of being, you know, so many things. that can Just be... acceptance of the way that things are done, mm -hmm. you know, like yep. that's it. Like, and, and also the environment in which you are, like maybe even back then and maybe even now, you know, you've got to look at those environments as well and have they changed. Like, so, yeah, so I was really aware. So that came up a couple of weeks ago. And then what I found was um, the we had we've just been through a really high energy period called the Lionsgate portal, and so I was I've been consciously working to to move forward like in in what I do um, in in all areas of my life. But I kind of felt like I was trying to lift like up through um, um, like up through the clouds almost. So like, you know, like my head, like up through a ceiling of cloud, just to break through. That was what I was looking for. And each time I would think, okay, I'm nearly there. I could feel that I was nearly there. And then yeah, it was up and it was like um, an energetic release, but you know, it can take like a period of time when you're working on particular things to do that as well. So I'm doing that like for myself. Um, mm. But you know, like with, you know, when we're working in sessions, we also do that with our clients as well and give them things to go on with and things that they can be proactive in doing as well. So, but I am on the right track here, aren't I? Because we all, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah oh, that's course. great. Top marks. Of course. Like, <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I guess I, I just, I just want to add why this has just been so um, eye opening for me, this topic. Because obviously there's things in your life that you start to wonder, yeah, why aren't I doing better at this? Or why am I like, you know, it's our comfort zone. We have such a comfort zone sometimes. And where those things, these subtle um, unconscious vows and commitments or promises that we can make to ourselves, often after we've been very hurt, very scared, very let down, very betrayed we feel sometimes as well even though yours wasn't like that it was just like more of just overhearing comment and they can be like that as well you know especially when we're children well. <laughs> you know we overhear our parents and our yeah. teachers you know talking about things having opinions about things you know if they can if they if you overhear them having opinions about you know rich people or entitled people or you know Gossip people have at it the too school gate. easy. Yeah, yeah, gossip at the know. school gate and judgment and what we would call offhand comments. But, you know, like they form our, at that, such an early age, they form our um, opinions about the world. They form our thought, belief our systems. thoughts and our belief systems. Yeah. yeah. And so as we know, what we believe we will manifest. And so it's been eye-opening for me, especially as a kinesiologist, to really you know, understand these belief systems, what people are really believing that are unconsciously going out and 
creating just their reality time and time again. And if, if you, you know, if you overheard um, these kind of things growing up, of course, a lot, you know, as children, we want to feel loved by our parents, yeah. accepted and things like that. So you wouldn't, you would unconsciously, I know for me, it's like, oh, well, of course we, we want to be able to have a good job and maybe a career and those kind of things. But unconsciously, if we hear, have heard or fear that the people that we, that love us the most are going to judge us or, <laughs> criticize us or something oh it's all right for those people who have it too easy of course they're in of course they're writing poetry they've got time you know not like us you know we've got to work hard like I've got no time it's like you know uh, or why why do you want to be a teacher you know you could be so much more you know or you know there so there are things you know and with our sense of belonging and our belief systems you know of course we're you know of course we will understand and accept that you know absolutely nothing wrong with it it happens what happened with me so but yeah it's a i i find this a fascinating topic and allison can just bring all this in and she's just so good at it (laughs) well i've been just like there's so many little sayings and things like that that i want to run through just to you know jog you just to jog the audience to people listening wow i've said that at one stage and it's amazing how much just one statement that you can make even to yourself unconsciously can actually be an imprint in your, you know, blueprint. It can be an imprint. It can form a cord and attachment and a, a vow and commitment and it can fill in that grid around you. So, so things like, have you ever said to yourself after being really hurt or let down or betrayed or someone's broken your trust? you know, vow, unconscious vows to like um, not need anyone or anything, be self-sufficient, independent, or be happy with the bare minimum. You know, the bare minimum of what? Bare minimum of love, bare minimum of um, friendship, bare minimum of trust, bare minimum of just material possessions, bare minimum of food. So if you're constantly going about your life trying to like get ahead in your life or, you know, find new love or better friends or, you know, be able to feed yourself, it's really important to have a look at these kind of times in your life where you may have just said these things and not realized the impact of that, what's going to start to form in your life. So even um, in past lives as well, like I've talked before about seeing past lives, seeing my own past lives. If you've had past lives where you've been a slave or, you know, poverty, like contracts and slave contracts, monastic contracts, if you've been a priest or a nun or a religious person, you know, you your imprint, your your energy is going to be often very much still maybe very frugal or those kind of things. You, you know, maybe give everything away. Maybe you're someone who just gives everything away all the time. You know, you don't want to hold on to anything because that feels so greedy or, you know, that's not godly to do yeah. that. It, it, yeah, in a fair way, like because we're going to be that. The thing about giving things away is when you're giving it away, but you're not actually leaving enough for yourself. So people exactly. would see that like they're the person that um, everyone comes to, and, and uh, they're so wonderful, and they've always got the answers. But in fact, you know, they don't they don't want to let anyone down by actually saying, "Actually, I need help here," or "Actually, I've given you," you know maybe um, food or the money that I'd set aside for my electricity bill or, you know, or money that I'd set aside for a holiday that I was planning on, you know. So those are the sort of things that you're talking about there, which is really important because they're like they're, they're an honest way of understanding, you know, how this can happen as well. Or even exactly. like time. Suddenly you've got no time for your family because you're giving your time everywhere else. So it may not also be a monetary thing. It may not be a financial thing. It might be time. Absolutely. Yeah. So vows to um, not be greedy, 
<laughs> vows not to be selfish or self-centered. Yes. You know, they're big ones that I've had to deal with being, you know, what I can't talk about being an, an earth angel. You know, for us, you know, we, if we've seen people who are very selfish or self-centered or greedy, then we make these vows to never be like that. And then we can never put ourselves first. We can never say no. We can never, you know, receive any kind of help or support. And it just spirals out of control. It's like 30 years you wake up and go, oh, my God, why am I the one doing everything all the time? (laughs) And because I said a long time ago to to not need anyone or anything. So it's great to be self-sufficient and independent, but it's got to be in balance. You've also got to be able to bring in the abundance and support that you need. And if it's affecting, you know, how you are um, within your own world, like your rights and responsibilities and you realize actually so if you're giving all your time away like with people coming around and having cups of tea and things like that then does that mean that you you're balancing that out with the time for the children your own children your own family the things that the rights and responsibilities that you have as a person within your life yeah you know because that's the important thing is sometimes we you know we're we're doing things which are if you were to look at from the outside it's not actually healthy. Exactly. That's the exactly the right. Yeah. I love that you brought that up because oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wonderful like that. It's been through the words. <laughs> because sometimes it can flow into just this addictive personality. You literally can't stop yourself. You know, in some level that. There's something not quite right, but you literally can't stop yourself from overgiving or, you know, getting yourself into a place of um, lack and things like that. There's a couple of other aspects that um, I've, I've dealt with with my clients as well that I wanted to talk about. And in particular, love and happiness and people with struggling with self-love or depression or really um, trying to break this cycle of unhappiness or depression or um, anxiety highs and lows because I've seen unconscious vows being made and state people have said unconsciously to themselves things like okay I'm never going to be happy again so if you can imagine a time in your life potentially where someone's really hurt you or really um, betrayed you and it's really broken your heart and it's happened time and time again maybe. Maybe you've trusted them or it's happened time and time again and you've, you're so at a point of a low point and desperation, you, you've potentially said, all right, we'll stuff you, I'm never going to be happy again as a way of trying to punish that person or get back at that person or unconsciously think, okay, well, if I'm just really, really, really unhappy, maybe then they'll see what they've done to me. But, you know, 5, 10, 20 years later, that person is like never going to see what they've done to you, never made amends, but that vow is still causing you to you know suffer depression or never be happy you've taken up a way of life and you've actually built it into your way of life so whereas before in the beginning you might have just been saying um, I'll just do that when they're around (laughs) and then suddenly you've actually built it into a life of actually being maudlin morose or nothing can ever go right why why don't I have love why don't I have friends you know and um yeah so. And the key here is like what I've realized as well is that often you can feel like the thought of being happier is somehow really painful and it's because often, and I want everyone to explore this for themselves, it's because the thought of being happy is like they're betraying themselves. It's like they're betraying that 14 year old self or whatever age you were because you told you promised that 14 year old self or whatever it was you're never going to be happy again so now 20 years later you're like I've got to I've got to fix this I've got to like I've got to fix this 
But and that can happen it's like to you're breaking that betrayal, you know. Yeah, and that can happen to say if somebody dies. Like if you're yeah. if you're young and or at any age and you're and you feel this um like if a grandparent dies or if your yeah. parent dies or yeah. or someone that you're close to dies and you can and it just like pulls something out of you and you just think that I can't believe it I'm never going to trust anyone you're like why get close to anyone you know like this is really it becomes like this overwhelming sense of loss and so I'm not going to go there anymore I'm going to self protect. You know, we attach and, and we pain. Forget. Yeah, we attach. we attach a pain to something that is, you know, good for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. So, and so even love. love. You know, there's so many people have attached pain to love. Love is painful, and so of course, you know, we, you know, our heads can be saying, "Yes, I want to find love and all this." But if you were to like check in with your heart and your body, it's like, eh, eh, you know, I love is painful. You can't trust it. You know, you promised me a long time ago never to, you know, trust love again, like all these unconscious vows and commitments. Um, so it's really important to start to pull these out, cancel, clear and delete them, dissolve them and then even rewrite new, you know, conscious vows and to bring in the new conscious vows that are serving you now for your highest good. And it's amazing how much you can then go beyond that ceiling, that, that, that limit that you've been beating your head against for so long. Very true. Very true. It does open it up and, and with awareness. And sometimes it hurts when these memories come up or these yeah. um, things come up. And sometimes it's quite liberating and it's just simply an aha moment and that's it. And it's just like, okay, I've realized now that's done. But then sometimes, you know, a little bit more work will need to be done and maybe it'll come up, you know, it can come up or components of that can come up, you know, 18 months later or something when you're going on to do something else, you know. So this, yeah, it is good. Like it's good to bring it up, but yeah, sometimes it can be painful, but often it can be liberating. And sometimes like so liberating, when I've yeah. realized, yeah, I remember there was one particular thing I realized and I just, I gave it, I just let out this sob and I was just like, and it might've just been like for 10 seconds. It was just like my breath was taken away. This is not recently, but you know, when I first started becoming aware of myself and, and then I just sort of set up and I thought, oh my goodness, it's gone. Whatever that was, it's gone. And it, it made such a difference. And I didn't even think I knew what it was. It was just this big sob that came out of me and then and the breath came away and then it was just it was gone. So there are many ways which these can be lifted, but I love the way Alison does stuff because actually she's pretty good. She's done some things for me. <laughs> <laughs> pretty big stuff. <laughs> darling so so yeah there, there are a few different ways to be able to cancel clear and delete um cut these cords dissolve the past life memory and often you know one of the ways and um i'll i'll you know i will create something that i will post on my website for everyone to have a go at and to help as well but literally what i like to do is like when this 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 past memory comes up of this this time where I was made these commitments or these vows or even a past life memory of being in a time where there was no other option like just just feeling like you just have to be happy that just with what you've got there was no other option whether that was like a life of um you know poverty or being on a farm and just slave work or whether it's just a life of just raising children or just being a provider there probably was time in your life where there you to deal with that kind of had to just get on and deal with it and just to like accept the way things are and you can bring that with you from that past life into this past life that comfort zone that that way of doing things or not being able to go expect any more because it's so imprinted in you. And often what my guides have done for me, they show me 
to help clear and transmute it, they bring in a frequency of white light healing to just start to dissolve that picture. It's like putting in a video into the TV and watching the video of this past life. And then all of a sudden, as the healing comes in, it changes the video in a way. The movie changes before your eyes and things start to like get better and work out for the better. It's like this whole new movie takes on a whole new better ending. And that's how it can be so powerful at releasing these, these attachments to these kind of past lives or vows and commitments by just changing the frequency, bringing in like a new ending as you will. And then you start to blend with that new energy and it's so it's so amazing. I just love it. <laughs> it is, it is. Hey, I actually I wanted to bring something up because you know, sometimes people think about past lives as all, oh, you know, like all oh, just like, you know, oh, just horrible, you know, like a like as in that victim state. And that's yeah. not true. No. Well, it's not true because there are past lives that were so wonderful that actually it's hard to adjust here. Mm. So one young lady that came to see me, she was really concerned about her sense of belonging within her own family. And she said, I just don't understand it. And I said, okay, well, we're going to do this, um, uh, you know, we'll do this process. And my guides were there with me and they said, okay, so relax down. The, the upshot of it was, was that she had a past life where she was the nonna and it was in Italy and she was surrounded by family. It was a very big family. They lived in um, like a, a rural area and it was just so beautiful and so warm. And she's talking about like being out there and she can hear the children playing over in the field there and all the family come. And it was so beautiful that she had difficulty with this life because she was pretty much like an only child. And But she oh. found herself always going to bigger families and wanting to um, you know, like be be there. And so she was seen as very social, but she was looking for something outside of her own family unit because this life was so beautiful that she had trouble with this life. Adjusting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah. So it made a difference to her to realise that and to see that as well. So yeah. How does cool. that kind of resonate in there? Because like, you know Yeah, definitely. It yeah. Can, can, like this is the thing you never know you never where know what's it's gonna, gonna come, come up. What's gonna yeah. come up. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, I just had a, I've had a client as well um, who, who realized that just because a parent said to her, you know, 10 years ago, who she hasn't seen this parent for 10 years and this person left and just said, have a good life. That she's now, Something. like, we came up in this session that, oh, my God, like, I have been literally shooting myself in the foot because I don't want to give this my parent the satisfaction of having a good life because, <laughs> <laughs> I you know, I'm so angry at this person for the way they've treated me. So it's, like, in defiant even. It's yeah. like, well, stuff you, I'm not going to have a good life. And it's I'm going like, to show you that you left me and you should have been here. Yeah. It's like, yeah. It's like, no, I've had a miserable life and it's all your fault because, you know, it's like exactly. the rights and responsibilities go out the door with this sort of stuff as well. Yeah. So forgiveness and cord cutting is, is, is a, has a lot to do with make, is trying to heal these kind of things, forgiveness and mm. releasing, transmuting and um, and just, just the awareness of these things can instantly empower you to go oh wow <laughs> you know that's a, that's crazy you know like that's what I find I have um you know I I look at myself I I look at it all like I really do look at it from like a personal growth point of view mm. like I just think ah okay then so I'm more aware then and then there's other things you know where it's definitely like cord cutting as well and um you know and releasing like absolutely seeing those released and they're, they're dissolved. Um, and also like with those cords that run can run between um, two people or a group or something like that and a situation as well, you know, like seeing those dissolved because they're no longer necessary. They're realised, you know, it's not, it's, it's, you know, it's gone. And so there's a great release that can go on with that sort of thing as well. 
Yeah. Well, that's right because so many people are like, will say, "Oh no, that's in the past. Like I'm over that. You know, I've dealt with. I'm over it." But showing but up now, ninety nine percent of the time, they're not. They've just suppressed it. Yeah. You know, and and that and that's that's the thing. And showing up in a different way. It's packaged differently, but it's the same. Uh, it's the same uh, pattern. It's the same uh, mode of behaviour. It's just the same. So yeah. it hasn't been released and that's, yeah, that's the important thing. So so what can they do? Alison, well, what can people do? <laughs> <laughs> well, just having, a, just having that awareness and mm. then just, you know, simply coming into their heart centre, just um, coming into their heart and um, coming into the present time here and now. Like sometimes I say, okay, so this is the day, the date, the time. Pull all fraction, all um, aspects of me that are back in past lives or different times in my life, all fragmented parts of me, my inner child, or that wherever you feel that's gone back to this this situation that happened. Call them all back into the here and now, into this present day in time. Say the date, the time, right here and now. And to um, seriously just call in, in your um, higher self and your empowered self and just say, I now cancel, clear and delete all unconscious vows, commitments, um, contracts, promises that I made this lifetime, past lifetimes, or especially at that age that are no longer serving me anymore for my highest good. I now cancel, clear and delete. And then you can often feel cords releasing, things untying, energy coming in and dissolving and to bring in forgiveness, just the energy of compassion. Have compassion for yourself. Compassion is such a really beautiful energy and vibration when you're doing this work. And to have compassion for who you were back then. Compassion, understanding that you needed to go through that for whatever reason. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then the more I bring in that just thank you, thank you, thank you for that time and for where I am today, I now cancel, clear and delete. And then I often now from that state rewrite and claim a new conscious vow. And often it's sometimes things like, I am now making a new conscious vow to feel worthy and deserving of having and receiving infinite joy, love, health, wealth, abundance, support. Just bring it in. And I just say, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm no longer going to, you know, be in self-sacrifice or whatever that vow is, I'm now infinitely worthy and deserving for infinite love, abundance, support, opportunities to come in and then just start to like like a vacuum of bringing in that energy yeah. again. So, so sometimes I see it as this, um, this new energy coming in to replace what went um, I see it as gold light or white light and it comes in. I can see it settling within me. Is that yeah. something also? Yeah, that, definitely. Yeah, is that if, you're very, if you're very clairvoyant that way, you can feel the white light coming in or a liquid golden light just coming in. And often I like to, I often I also get shown, just imagine you have this mirror in front of you and everything from your past that is no longer serving you, please sh um, show this up in this mirror in the way of like dirt or grime or things like that. And I just allow this mirror in front of me to, to appear of anything that's no longer serving me for my highest good to appear on this mirror. And then I call in, the liquid cleansing gold light of, you know, of above, or I just imagine like this squeegee bottle coming in and spraying it with liquid gold light and just cleansing this mirror. And just, I often see it just like being thrown on the ground, like someone's cleaning a window and just flicking all the grime, all the attachments and emotions and 
anything. The more we actually buy into it, the more we actually think about it, the harder it is to clear. So the more we can just be removed from it, just very emotionally detached from it. Sometimes we don't even need to know, like I know you often work like that. We don't even need to know what it is. We just trust that whatever is no longer serving us is showing up in some form on this mirror and allow the light to cleanse it, just cleanse it, release it, and to bring us into this present day today cleansed. And it's a really good way of describing it. Like if if we if we focus on and particularly like after we do a meditation or even like work with a client, if we focus on what was, you know, what was there, it brings it back because yes. it's an energy. So we can create another Especially thought form about it. Especially with the 5D earth now. If we yeah. refocus on stuff, it just can come back into our energy field. Yeah. Because whatever we think about brings about, like it's it's part of that manifestation thing. So our thoughts create our reality. And um, and please, please, you know, don't anyone jump on the bandwagon and say, oh, so does that mean that this was created because, you know, and that it's not about that. We're talking about like um, in every or, everyday ordinary life. I really was. Like, <laughs> it's like, be yeah, that's, to be clear. You that's know, the thing. And, Think about now what it is that you do want. So yeah. like I explained before with the video, kind of the movie, that that's new movie starts to play and it's like you've taken out the old video or the old DVD, yeah. put in a new DVD and start watching that because our soul now is, you know, just coming through us and it is going to start to create the things that we see, the things that we believe, the things we imagine and just keep blending your energy with that. Mm, yeah. And and so a great way to look at that, my guys have just said, so if you're looking at that um, at that um, screen that Alison's talking about and you don't really know what it is that you want in your life, but you you know how you want to feel. So maybe you're actually looking at, you're looking at yourself on that screen actually being happy and actually feeling happy and knowing that that person, like that you as that person are happy, like and that you're contented and you have everything you need with you all of the time. And healthy as well. Health, so if yep. it's hard for you to visualize yourself healthy if you've been sick for yep. a long time or if you've been alone for a long time with yep. love around you, yeah, it's just anything that you're been trying to create yep. more of. Yeah. Ask so you be, them to show it to you on that screen. Yeah, show it to me. <laughs> so to, well, show me. Show me. <laughs> I want to see it. <laughs> what am I looking at? I always find that that's a really efficient way. So I just say, yeah, well, show me. <laughs> and they do. And then I always have to keep blending my body's comfortability with that. I have to keep soothing my body's comfortability with seeing myself or feeling myself like, doing those things being happy being you know all those things so my yes. body's like oh yeah that's what it feels like yeah. again you know <laughs> so used to feeling the other way it's like you're attuning yeah. attuning attuning which is you know so important because we are so empathic what we think about we're instantly going to be like you know downloading or attuning ourselves to so it's really important to start being more consciously aware of what we're tuning ourselves to. Yeah. I want to bring something up. So a couple of mm -hmm. weeks ago we talked about um, uh, it was in um, 5D and so it was in Ascension and 5D New Earth and we were talking about you know, like being um, aware of what's around you and things like that as well. Well, I can tell you like, I um, – I said in that that, you know, like I'm very clear about what I do and where I put myself and, um, you know, like and, and staying clear with my purpose. And one of the things that my um, <laughs> that happened was um, that I, I also talked about like distractions as well, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, I love TV. <laughs> I love I love watching shows and I love watching um, series and there was this really, really good one on and, my goodness, I should not have watched that because my distraction was taken. Um, it was, <laughs> geez, my distraction was taken away from what I'm doing and it affected me and made me actually look for the ill in the world 
and for all of the things that were going wrong in the world. And it took me maybe about four or five days to actually really like cut through it. And so like, that was a TV show. It was like, it was almost going into like conspiracy theory types of things. And it was just so distracting. Now, if it's you, so true, you know, yeah, the so, TV and the media. And I am normally, I because my father was an editor, um, this is like back when they were doing film in the late 60s and um, early 70s, so he worked on film. So, you know, I understand like production, I understand storytelling, but I just, I just like, it just really affected me. So, you know, that can take away from our ability to, uh, you know, that distracted me from seeing the goodness in the world. And it was a big lesson for me, like a big lesson for me, because mm. I just thought, you know what, that's just really dense and it's really horrible. And if I can't see the good in the world, then I'm not going to feel good about myself. My energy, I have a big energy. It affects everyone and everything around me. So I'm really mindful of that at the best of times. So, yeah, um, yeah that was, <laughs> that's going to stop me if I continue to watch that kind of things as much as a fantastic production. I mean, the actors were fantastic, but the story just got a bit too much at the end. It's like, oh, my God. So, yeah, there are distractions as well that might stop um, or might hinder that um, being able to see yourself um, um, and how you want to be, you know, like yeah. that density, that conspiracy type thing. That but don't is forget, old. like, it's what important. kind of – yeah, exactly. It's so important. And watching those kind of things alter your belief systems as well. You start to, you know – all sorts of unconscious fears or insecurities or, you know, beliefs can start to ramp up within you that um, yeah. you know, can really af affect affect people. And that's because of the, the, um, the 5D earth that we're in and moving into the 6D earth in the next couple of years, you know, like people was... don't realise how much what they see, what they hear, what they feel is now just, you know, so down it was such a con field. it was such a contrast to to my normal state of being that it actually quite shocked me because I just thought normally I would see this as a production but it was a like it was fascinating I'll be honest with you it was fascinating but at the end of it I just sort of I saw um, as you know like I can see into dynamics and patterns and relationships so I tend not to look at um, to read books about say um, something that has happened in the past because I can. I can see it and I can be taken back into that. And that is like tremendously sad or scary or upsetting. But, you know, so I'm really quite mindful of it. But, I mean, this was like a fantastic production. It was just a story. So I'm quite aware of the difference between history and a story. But some of those things in there, like I don't know where the writers got this from, but this this was like you could see, like I could see that this sort of thing does happen. And so, you know, it just it took me into a place of really dense things and I became quite um, my energy field and I felt really um, taken over by the concept of this. So, you know, I am, I, it was a good lesson for me to be really mindful. <laughs> you can raise your vibration all you like, but you just got to watch these fantastic productions that come up. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good bit of cinematography, but this was just too much over the top. <laughs> anyway, so there you go. Do you have anything else to add? To your... Um, I think we've covered a lot. Um, I just, I just would, you know, want to reiterate this this concept of discovering what maybe unconscious vows or contracts or um commitments for yourself and explore it a little bit because it really can make a huge difference if you have been spinning your wheels on something, really struggling to, you know, move ahead in whatever area of your life all the time, um, yeah. whether it's, you know, weight issues or relationship issues or even slowing down. Like, are you someone who always has to keep busy all the time? Why is it that you feel so you can't slow down or take a break? And just, you know, allow yourself to just you um think, where does that come from? 
Where does that come from? Is it the, this lifetime that I get it from my parents? Or, you know, can you allow yourself to tap into or feel, oh no, this feels like it's a, a you know, an, a past lifetime where, you know, I was never allowed to slow down. I'd get into trouble for slowing down. You know, it's just that subtle, subtle imprinting sometimes can be so powerful to clear, to help bring you into balance. And it's all about just bringing you back into a healthier state of being and balance like you talked about before. So you can um, move beyond these old ways of being that are no longer serving you. Very true. So, yeah. Well, there you are. So, well, we – that was – I'll be honest with you, Alison, that was really good to be able to talk about that because you always have so many good things to say. And you're just like, <laughs> I like the way that you work and the, and I love how you know your stuff, so to speak. You know, like it's something that you're passionate about and you've used it in your everyday life as I have. So we have experience with this. And so we know that we can feel confident in talking about it because it does make a difference. It's not always about past lives. It's not always no. about this life. It can be about anything. But if we can allow ourselves to to explore it and see where it goes, that's the important thing. Yeah. So And I think just just this one one little thing that my little guys just keep you know, I know we've probably talked about it, but the whole thing around love and bringing in the, the energy and frequency of love and even like self love. If for anyone out there who has, who is still, you know, struggling to make healthy choices for themselves, do things that are loving for themselves, um, and trying to break unhealthy habits, um, just, just really work on this one because this, unconscious if we've grown up with any kind of belief systems or vows around unhealthy ways of what love is if we've seen if we've seen people who we've judged or seen as very um self-centered or very up themselves or only love themselves then again we can tend to go the other way and not want to be like that. So please look into these things. Are they resonating to you? Because you don't want to be blocking your love, your ability to love yourself, make healthy choices for yourself because of things that you saw or viewed and a long time ago. Okay. So just so freeing like you said to be able to really free yourself from from these things so so yeah please look into these kind of things and let us know you know yeah. send us an email or you know type some comments really let us know if this has been interesting to you or if there's anything that you've um, really discovered from this session today that's right and we've, we're pretty private about things so you know if you, you if you were to send something we would just say look this is a comment that came through we don't have to say your name or anything like that or if you want us to that's okay too we don't mind we're very respectful of privacy but we really do welcome feedback we want to know what you want to know about as well um, our guides and um, and actually they always tell it what is relevant people are saying this is relevant I like watching this. I like listening to this on podcasts. It is making a difference and thank you. And so thank you to everyone that's doing that. And until next week, I wish you well. Wish you um, well. And we'll see you then. All right. Okay. Bye, bye, bye now. Bye. bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Sacred Sessions. Your comments, questions and topic suggestions are welcome. So connect with us on Facebook and Instagram and through our websites. Naturally, all links are in the show notes.